Hey guys, let's talk about Black Ink Crew Chicago Season 4, Episode 2. Um, so we learned from last episode that Ryan has decided to not renew the lease on this, the working space and let everybody fend for themselves. I honestly thought that it was a good idea because no way would I work in an environment where nobody respects me, regardless of whether you have a reason to respect me or not. At the end of the day, I am a, your boss. So no way am I going to be the person that takes the sole responsibility of anything going wrong where, and you don't recognize me as the leader, you know, like even group assignments in school, you know, if you assign someone as a leader who basically accepts the, you know, well, let's not even do group assignments. Let's do work. And you have, the leader, the supervisor, that basically is going to take the bulk of the responsibilities if anything was to fall short. Rather that supervisor has minimum experience in his role, rather he makes a few mistakes of his own, he is still your supervisor. And if you don't recognize him as that, well, you stop start disrespecting him and the responsibility that he has yeah, something got to change. He got to get rid of you or something. Because at the end of the day, he is still your boss. They didn't respect him. Regardless of the cat situation, that wasn't, first off, that wasn't their business. So if the man says that, you know what, I don't want her at the shop. And y'all still do it well, we're going to do a vote. As if this man is not the person on the lease. Then y'all crazy. So... I totally get why he wanted to go ahead and say, you know what, fine. Y'all want to have these rule outs and all of these things? Then no problem. You take over the lease then. I'll go somewhere else. You know, his parents was like that he shouldn't have left. But the way, but I feel like him leaving was basically the less, the route of the less riot. Because imagine him going in there and telling them, hey, all y'all, y'all get out. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to hire a whole new squad. Y'all get out. Y'all going, y'all move y'all things out. Then they really would have had a field day. So he's like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to move my things out. Y'all ought to get the lease renewed. Or you got a week to get out. It's up to y'all. I'm, I'm going to get my things out. You know? That right there is a is quite peaceful. If, if you break up in a marriage and instead of saying, you know what? get out of my house, you know, and, and causing a, a chaos or the person don't want to leave. And it's like, you know what, well, fine, I'll just move. But you take over these mortgage. See if you can handle that. And if and if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. So I totally get and agree with him on that. I don't understand why everyone is blaming Rachel when and comparing her to Duchess when Rachel has not, to me, has not shown signs of Duchess characteristics. She supports her man, which is what you're supposed to do. But she's not like a, hey, all up in his ear, like, yo, you know what? Screw a, a, a four, screw of this. No, she just reminds him that, hey, at the end of the day, you are the boss. Like, do what you feel. However you want to move with this, I'm down with you, period. Which is what every supporting, you know, partner is supposed to do. Um... I have yet to see her even, you know, freak out on any of them. Even when Kat comes to her on her and Ryan's bullshit, Rachel didn't even freak out on her. She freaked out on producers. So for everyone to be coming at Rachel is like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't see it, but whatever. As far as foreign Nikki goes, Nikki is very immature. Such a beautiful girl on the outside. Um, even if even if she did that for TV purposes, why even allow yourself to be played out on TV like that? Like this man who has been fighting for his dream for a very long time. And with you guys being together for so long, I'm sure you know of that. And he finally gets the opportunity. And it's just for six months. You know? Like he said, you guys are doing very well. You're doing very well with your business. You're your own boss. You can go out there and visit him as much as possible, or he can come out to visit you. Like, it's six months. Allow that man to at least try, because if he doesn't, then he grows resentment for you. And then that's really going to put a damper on your relationship. 
that he feels as if you're going to be the one that stopped him from progressing within his his feel within what his you know stopped him from pursuing his passion that's gonna really put a damper on y'all relationship so just let that man go and y'all relationship should be strong enough that six months you do the visiting thing you do the webcam thing whatever you need to do to make it work y'all should be able to make it work that's what nikki needs is a friend telling her dad and what ashley needs is better friends and family because her brother and her cousin slash friend have been giving her the worst advice in reference to Don. Don has been showing that he was a cheater since before y'all even became official with your relationship. Keep in mind, though, that the, the daughter came about from a girl who was saying that, hey, I was in a relationship. He cheated on me with you. So basically, he was playing the both of y'all. Okay? So that's one. He cheats with Charmaine season one. The relationship with the daughter thing comes out season two. Um, you know, he's, he cheats with, you know, the stripper the day before you guys get married. Like, I don't see how, like, like you don't see this coming. Okay. But I remember season one where you were more so on some, oh, you need to let these girls know that like, I'm, you know, like the main girl. So you had that childish mentality as if, uh, as long as I'm number one. And these girls know it. You know what I'm saying? Then that's fine. You had that mentality. And I can tell your family and friends had that mentality as well. Which is why they convinced you to stay with someone like Dawn. Which is insanity. So now your friend goes and convinced you to meet up with, with the girl. As if you didn't see the video with the rest of the world that this man been cheating. And oh, well it's a one night stand. No, no one night stand. You handcuff why are you bobbing for apples? I don't like no that that requires trust. And trust you just don't grab on a one night stand. That's some shit that comes a little bit, you know, with time. So that right there, I don't believe. But and she proves to you that no, we've been doing this. Oh, well, I've had an abortion for him in the past. Yes, the girl is stupid. Granted, but but you are in no position to call her that. But, oh, congratulations, you played yourself. No, you played yourself when you married that man knowing that he had already then got loose with the stripper less than 24 hours before you say I do. So you are in no position to tell her that. And then y'all became extremely childish doing the, oh, you eat, you've been eating my ass. No, you've been eating my ass. No, you've been eating my ass. Like, Childish as a wife, you shouldn't have even gone there. You should have had more respect for yourself to not even go there. And you started that conversation with, a, oh, yeah, I was sitting on his face and, and on his dick right before he came to meet with you. If I was a girl, I wouldn't have even entertained you with that and said, OK, well, I hope so, considering that you are his wife. You know, but both of y'all are extremely childish, disgusting ass individuals where y'all are doing this back and forth in a bookstore. Like it was... It was degrading. And for the girl to step to you as if like, oh, like she throws the keys down like she wants to swing, forgetting that she's pregnant. I wouldn't have blamed Ashley if Ashley would have swung after you swing first. Because how are you forgetting that you pregnant? And you only did that because our securities were there. So it, it, it was just, it was distasteful. Um, and I get it that you were emotional. You probably don't even recognize what was being done but i guess but i will say this though that scene was very real it was extremely real and it was what rashida's reaction would have been if her and kurt's situation was real to be honest with you um and i hope that y'all recognize that so um what else took place oh the party the party it's not gonna get much much of a conversation for me. Bottom line is, is that they throw a party. They shit on Ryan's name. Ryan pulls up to it. From what I hear, production actually stopped him from going inside. So, um, yeah, the end of that, you know, Lily and Junior, Lily grow up. He's moved on. No need for you to disrespect the girl. Um, and I'm glad he's moved on because Junior seems like a good guy. So, yeah, that's the end of it. You know, we'll see you guys next time. And you guys let me know what you think.